Hey everyone and welcome to the internet. What we're going to be doing in today's lesson is having a look at the different transport systems that we've got in plants. Because up until this point we've had a look at animals, mainly humans, and now we need to understand that plants also have transport systems. To start us off we've got four questions based around our previous lesson, so have a go at answering those four questions in your book. Now first three are pretty quick. But the fourth one there is going to take you a little bit of time. So I'm going to give you about five minutes. So really give the time and thought to question four to add as much detail as you can.
Okay, let's mark those answers then. So for question one, the four chambers in the heart, you get a mark for each of these you've got right. The left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, and right ventricle. For the four components of the blood, again, a mark for each of these that you've got. The red blood cell, white blood cell, platelet, and plasma. The function of the red blood cells is to carry oxygen around the body. One mark if you got that. And then the last bit, this is a lengthy one. We've got a potential 12 marks here. So any of these points, you can give yourself a tick and therefore a mark for. So blood enters the heart through the vena cava, one mark. Into the right atrium, mark. It passes through the tricuspid valve, give yourself a tick, into the right ventricle, another mark for that one. Where it's pumped out through the semilunar valve, there's a mark, into the pulmonary artery. From the pulmonary artery it goes into the lungs and then it will return to the heart through the pulmonary vein, a mark for that bit, and into the left atrium, a mark for that, flows through the bicuspid valve, give yourself a tick, into the left ventricle, tick that bit, it's pumped through the semilunar valve, tick for that one, into the aorta, final mark there, and from that point it goes around the body. So obviously have a read through, if there's any bits in there that you've got, give yourself a tick, and then add up your total score for all four of those questions out of 21 today. So add up your scores and give yourself a mark in your books out of 21. When it comes to plants and their transport systems, we need to know the names of two special types of tissue. So the first one of these is a tissue called xylem, and it's spelled X-Y-L-E-M. Now, the purpose of the xylem is to transport water and dissolved mineral ions from the roots where it's entered our plant, all the way up through the stem to the leaves, the flowers, and all the parts of the plant itself. Hopefully we remember from our earlier work that where we're talking about water entering the plant, it does that through the process of osmosis which hopefully we remember is that movement of water molecules from the area of high water concentration to the area of low water concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. Now, what we then need to do is understand that our mineral lines are taken up by a different process, which again we met earlier on in this unit, which is active transport, because the mineral ions are actually in a lower concentration in the soil than they are inside the plant cells. So that means it's going from low concentration to high concentration. It's got to be an active process, so it means it needs ATP, and therefore it is active transport. So on the screen there, what you've got are three sentences to have a go at finishing off, and the words you need are in the red box at the bottom. And at the top, you can see I've given you a little bit to help you remember what the xylem transports. And the easy thing here is, it's the alphabet because water is transported in xylem. So we've got W for water and XY in xylem. So WXY, water in xylem. It's a handy way just to remember what it's transporting. So get those three sentences written in your book, fill in the blanks. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to have a go at that.
let's just double check we've got all those words in the right place then. So the xylem tissue transports water and mineral ions from the roots to the stem, leaves and flowers. The order of stem, leaves and flowers can be in any order there. Water enters the roots by osmosis and mineral ions are taken up by active transport. So obviously tick any of those you got right, then give yourself a mark out of eight for it. And as always, on any of those that you didn't get right, make sure you've got the correct answers written in. We need to know a little bit more about what xylem actually is. So what I've given you on the right hand side of the screen there then is a diagram of the xylem vessel. Now when you look at it, what you might notice is it looks just kind of like a straw. Remember we sliced through it so we don't have the front or the back there. But what we end up with is pretty much a long tube. Because what we actually have is a structure that's made up of dead cells. And the reason that these cells are dead is because in order to strengthen them, then the plants release a substance called lignin into the cell walls. Now that thickens the cell walls, but it does make them impermeable, so substances can no longer cross. Therefore, they're dead. So the lignin provides the support so that it doesn't then need those end walls between the cells. So where we would have had a whole load of, as we've seen them in diagrams, rectangles stacked up one on top of the other, then those end walls have actually been removed. And all we've got are the sides. And it's strong enough to hold upright without the actual end walls because of that lignin. So make sure you've got those four points written down. And if you want to do a sketch of the diagram, by all means, feel free to do so. I will leave this up for about another minute and a half, but if you need any longer to do anything, obviously you can just hit pause on the video and take as long as you need. The second type of specialised plant tissue we need to know about is this one called phloem. It's got a weird spelling, P-H-L-O-E-M, phloem. Now, the phloem tissue is used to transport dissolved sugars, and hopefully we remember the name of the process that makes sugars in plants, and hopefully we remember the balance symbol equation for it. So what I'd like to do is finish off the sentence at the top in your books, write the balance symbol equation for whatever process that may be and then you can write down the sentence at the bottom. So I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to have a go at that.
So hopefully we managed to fill in the correct words here. Obviously tick them if you get them right. If you don't, then make sure you've got the right answers written in. So the phloem tissue transports dissolved sugars made in the process of photosynthesis. And hopefully we all remember that the balance symbol equation for photosynthesis is 6CO2 plus 6H2O makes C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Now, what we actually have then is the phloem is transporting these sugars, things like the glucose that we've made in photosynthesis around the plant, because it's not just the plant cells that are making the sugar that need the sugar. It's needed throughout the whole plant, all the way from the leaves down to the very roots. So we need to transport that sugar through the tissue called phloem. And the process by which we move the dissolved sugars and other food molecules is called translocation. So we're moving the sugars from one place to another. And the way I always get my kids to try to remember that we're transporting sugars in phloem is thinking about good old Ben and Jerry's. So obviously if you've had a tub of Ben and Jerry's then you know that it is packed full of sugar. And the best one I give you here to remind you is the fish food because it's spelt PH just like phloem is spelt PH. So we've got the sugars in our Ben and Jerry's fish food and we've got the sugars in the phloem. So just another little trick to help you remember what's transported in which of these specialized tissues in our plants. So as I already mentioned, we've got to transport sugars all over the plant. And there's two key regions that do need the sugars here. First one are the merry stem cells. And remember the merry stems are where the plant is growing. So the reason we need the sugars there is to actually use those sugars to make new cells. Second place is down into the roots where it can be converted into a storage chemical. And that's really useful, particularly in those plants that do have things like bulbs and tubers and so on to actually help them last to a new season. So the sugars end up down in that root region for storage as well. Make sure you've got those couple of points written down. I'll leave it up for another minute. So here we've got a bit more detail about our phloem cells then. The first thing and a big difference between xylem and phloem is that phloem is made of living cells. And remember the xylem was dead. So that's one key difference between them. Xylem, dead cells, phloem, living cells. In our phloem, we still got those end walls between the cells, but they're not solid they've actually been punched with little holes to call them sieve plates. So what we actually have is right the way through that end wall of our plant cell are a series of teeny tiny little holes which then allow the sugars to pass through from one cell to the other. And again we've got the diagram on the right that shows you that. So the whole idea here is to allow those sugars to move easily through the cells. Now what you can notice in the diagram there is it's a two-way flow. So sugars can not only go from the leaves down to the roots, but they can also then go from the roots back up to the leaves. Because remember, we just said that the roots actually have a lot of sugars down there for storage, but if our plant then needs more sugars, it can take them out of storage, transport them back up the flow to the leaves where they're needed. So if you want to do the diagram, by all means feel free. I'm going to leave this up for about one more minute, but if you need any longer, just hit pause and take as long as you need.
So the picture you've got on your screen now then is a very zoomed in image of these little green bugs you see on plants at this time of year called aphids. Now what I want you to have a go at doing is answering the question here, why do aphids cause damage to plants? And I've given you a hint there to think about what they feed on and how. So look at the picture to give you a hint there. Give you a couple of minutes to have a go. What we find then is that these aphids are feeding on the sugars that we find in the phloem. Now, in order to get the sugars, they've got to actually punch through the surface of the plant. And you can see that lighter green part on the actual picture there. That's going to punch through the surface and then into the phloem. Now, the problem with that is we've then breached the surface of the plant, which means it's now at risk of infection. So give yourself a tick if you've got any of those points in there. When it comes to the xylem and the phloem, these aren't just free floating around in the plant. They're actually associated with each other in a structure called a vascular bundle. So wherever you see the phrase vascular bundle, it's talking about the xylem and the phloem tissue. And what we actually find is that that location of the vascular bundle is going to change depending on the region of the plant. And it does that to then provide different types of support to the plant. So get those couple of points written down for me first of all. I'll leave this up for just under a minute for you. What I've got for you here then is on the right hand side is a diagram. So we've got our plant in the middle and then you can see there's three zoomed in diagrams on the right hand side of it. So the top one is the leaf, the middle one is your stem and the bottom is the root. So 
what I'd like you to have a go at doing is look at the diagram and then see if you can explain where in those three regions the vascular bundles are found and then have a go at suggesting why they may be in those regions. So I'm just going to give you about two minutes to have a little go at this. Obviously, if you're not sure on the whys, you can at least get the wheres from the picture. If we start at the top with our leaf then, what we can see is that if you pick up any leaf, so go outside, pick up a leaf, you're going to see on the surface are these veins. Now the veins that you can see are the vascular bundles forming this network across that surface. The leaf itself is made of quite soft tissue that without those vascular bundles forming a network, it wouldn't actually be able to support itself. So in the leaf, they form a network to support the softer tissues. If we now move to the stem in our middle diagram there, you can see that those vascular bundles are all arranged in a circle, working their way around the outside. Now, the region, reason that they're in that region in our stem is because we need it to be strong. And what we find is by arranging them in a circle around the outer edge there, it gives it the strength and prevents it bending too much in the stem. Because if the stem bends too much, it's more likely to break. Then the very bottom picture in our root, you can see it's in the very center there. And the whole purpose for that is, it needs to be strong enough to hold the plant in the ground, but it needs to bend because otherwise, if the wind blew and it didn't have that bend in it, it would just snap it instantly. So what we need to do is have it in the center there to allow the movement in the wind of the plant and to anchor it into the ground. So make sure you've got those written in. I'll leave them up about another 30 seconds if in case you need them. So final thing for today then is the plenary task. So those of you with target grades up to grade five, it's the two columns on the left. Those of you with target grades over grade five, it's the two columns on the right. So I'll leave this up for about a minute today. If you obviously need any longer, then just hit pause and take as long as you need.
As always, you can find the answers to the plenary over on my website, sciencewrite.weebly.com. You'll also be able to find that under the internet tab. Just select the week that we're in, and then you'll be able to find things like the lesson PowerPoints, the answers to the plenary, any additional work, and if there's any little experiments I thought you could do at home, then they're there too. So have a look and get using that.